first. These are all the chemical symbols for different minerals. You have calcium, selenium, chromium, iron, copper, potassium, manganese, aluminum, etc. around the corner. And the lines across the circle show interactions between those minerals. There are some things that can happen, like if you take one mineral, its effect on another mineral is it could cause you to absorb more of that other mineral from your diet. If you take calcium here, we have arrows opposing each other here and you have mag magnesium. That means if you take calcium, you're going to reduce the amount of magnesium in your body. Right? And you'll reduce it either by reducing the absorption across the gut or increasing the excretion in the urine. So obviously, I'll just take our example, if you just take a calcium supplement, you just eat calcium, if you do that long enough, you're going to become magnesium deficient. Supplementing one creates the deficiency in the other. Not only that, from this chart, if you just take calcium, you're also going to become deficient in iron, you can become deficient in phosphorus, you will become deficient in, it'll tend to reduce sodium, uh, it tends to reduce the amount of lead, we need a, lead as a poison in large amounts, but it's absolutely essential in tiny amounts uh, in the body. And then here we have another kind of arrow. This isn't an opposing arrow, that's a one directional. So calcium will actually increase the absorption of zinc, and so on. It opposes potassium, and it increases manganese. So what happens if you just take calcium? Well, then you alter the levels of all these others. And let's just say you've taken a lot of calcium here and you've ended up depleting your body of magnesium as a result. Then the lowered magnesium is going to affect all these minerals. So it's really, you're, you're asking for trouble. It's a devil's bargain to take one supplement. For two million years, how did we take our minerals? All at once. <laughs> they occur in the plants all at once. They're drawn up out of the soil. We take the whole orchestra. We have the violins, we have the drums, we have the piano, we, we have uh, the bassoons, we have the oboe, you know, the whole symphony, we brought the whole thing into our body for two million years, and that's what our body requires. It requires all of them and all of them together. Now, with modern technology, we can isolate them and make them a supplement out of one of them. But here you have the evidence here that if you just take one, that you will inevitably create imbalances in the others. So I'll close and then be available for questions. I run a clinic. It's the Rocky Mountain Center for Botanical Studies in Boulder, Colorado. I run the internship there, meaning I, I train the clinicians. Collectively, we see about 500 patients a year. That's not a lot. But what we do is we fill a niche that many of the other uh, medical professions don't, is that we get the patient's whole story. So uh, we spend an average of two hours on an intake instead of the average of seven minutes that the average American doctor spends with a patient on intake. We get their life history, we get their medical history. On the second visit, we get a diet diary. Five days, they keep a list of all the foods they eat and then we can see what's in their diet and we can analyze that. And um, we we'll make sure we find out what drugs they're taking, what medications they're taking, which might have side effects and so on. In other words, we get, we get the whole story. This gives us information to mine and learn from that we wouldn't get if we just did a superficial uh, analysis or gnosis. Most of the people there, one of our str nutritional strategies is what you've seen here so far is theoretical. It's all stuff out of books. When we actually look at people's diets and we look at people's symptoms, they're just like what you saw here. So a part of our strategy is to uh, maximize the mineral nutrition of our patients. Even before we think of giving them strong herbs, there are powerful herbs you can give someone for immunodepression or for depression or anxiety or so on. We want to make sure that we're addressing the cause of those problems, so we may medicate them with herbs, but we also look at their diet. So I'm going to give you some case studies here of where this particular product by this company, where we've used that very successfully, and I'm going to explain why I think the ionic mineral form probably is producing the medical results we see in the clinic. I will say, you know, that this isn't the only thing we do. We have them eating whole foods and we usually try to have them breaking up kelp, uh, seaweed, breaking that up and using that in place of salt and sprinkling that on their food so that they're getting more minerals from the sea. One of the things Dr. Price found, the nutritional anthropologist in the 30s, was he was at 16,000 feet in the Andes Mountains. 
that's very, very high. <laughs> For you who came from sea level here to Salt Lake City, you're probably short of breath from the altitude. This is only like about 5,000 feet. Imagine going to 16,000 feet. And he was with the Indian tribe there. And one of his anthropological methods was to African tribesmen or whatever and they'd have a pack or they'd have a pouch on their belt and he'd say well what do you have in your pack or what do you have in your pouch he'd want to see what food they carried with them to find out what they were really eating and this one uh, particular man at 16,000 feet had a little pouch on his belt and he said uh, uh, well what do you have there and he opened it up and he had kelp and fish eggs from the sea right at 16,000 feet and it was such a valued food they recognized at 16,000 feet that they got sick unless they ate minerals. This is a traditional people and they traded from tribe to tribe from sea level up to 16,000 feet and that it was such a valued food that it's what this man carried on his person when he was on a long distance walk. Going from that into these case studies when I see people are mineral deficient especially if they have a disease I always recommend that they take their, their minerals in an ionic form. And here are some cases. The first one is a young woman, 23 years old. She has a history of anorexia nervosa. That's an eating disorder where due to psychological problems a young woman won't eat. It's usually women that have this. And from her teenage years, about the time she went into puberty, about 13 or 14, up until she was 20, she starved herself systematically. Then she got counseling for this, uh, did therapy for this and overcame some of the psychological problems and it was a continuous struggle but she was eating more and she wasn't so thin but still underlying the underlying pattern her reserves were gone in some of the, of the elements and you imagine trying to recover from like the the nutrient depletion of a disease where you starve yourself trying to recover from that with modern foods <laughs> That you can eat you can eat all the good diet you can make yourself eat and then you eat it isn't in there well this woman also had worked for uh, four years she had worked in health food stores so she had taken different supplements while she was in the health food stores and I spent the early years of my life that was uh, one of my careers I, I worked for 14 years in health food stores I know what it's like you know you, you take some vitamins and you do that and uh, they don't usually make a whole lot of difference you know you you can take them and you feel better but it isn't like a dramatic difference well this woman against this background of starvation there were some things she needed and she was taking supplements and not getting anything and this was just as simple as she had mild fatigue and low energy and it just couldn't get better no matter what she did no matter what she ate I suggested she take the ionic mineral supplement from the Great Salt Lake and in three days Three days she called me on the phone and she says, you know, I've been working in health food stores for four years and this is the first time I ever took anything that actually made me feel better. <laughs> so uh, we can speculate on why that, why that was. That ionic, broad-spectrum seawater supplement has a lot of those trace elements that are now missing from the food. It's possible that she got supplied with one of those that was absolutely essential regulator or cofactor for her. I suspect, and I, I've seen this, my guess is I could probably describe 20 case studies where I've given people the ionic minerals and it made some kind of difference there. And often what is remarkable is that the change is rapid. Sometimes in one day or two days the people will feel a difference, and certainly within a week. My speculation on that is that the rapid change isn't from the trace elements. I think the rapid change is from the magnesium in that supplement. According to you know nutritional scientists in North America, we're in a, a plague of magnesium famine uh, in North America. There's a statistic from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Every year, it's an annual exercise, they analyze the whole entire food output of the United States. Right? That's all the farm output, all the food for human consumption, not farm output, but the stuff coming out of food factories, home gardens, anything that they suspect that people will eat. They analyze, that's the entire American food supply. And then they look at all the nutrients in that, and then they divide that by the number of people in the United States, and divide that by the number of days in a year. And they end up with the daily dose of all the different nutrients that is available to human beings if they ate all that food if none of it was thrown in the garbage there was no waste none of it was fed to ant pets the chances of that are, are, are nil if the entire American food supply were consumed on a per capita basis in an equal way everybody in the United States would be magnesium deficient 
This is according to the United States Department of Agriculture statistics. So clinically, that we saw early.